Hello all, I want to welcome you to today's class. Uh, today we will be starting our module 5. The module 5 we will be talking about balancing chemical equations in the first lecture. But before we do that as usual, I have a beautiful quote for you here. It says, success is not final, failure is not fatal. It is the courage to continue that counts. This quote was by Winston Churchill, one of the greatest uh, leaders in the world, as it were, and former Prime Minister of the Great Britain. I will not talk much about this, but just what I want you to know, take away is this, is that no matter the current situation, no matter the current standing, what matters is your ability to be consistent. The courage to be consistent is what, is what matters. And at the end of the day, the end will justify the means. Let's take it off from here. Uh, today, we intend to address three things in particular. We'll identify the reactants and products in a chemical reaction, in a chemical, in a written chemical equation, rather. We'll balance written chemical equations, and then we convert what equations, equations that are written in word, equations to balanced equations, and vice versa. And we can also convert from uh, word equations, we can convert from written equations to word equations, as the case may be. So these are the things you expect, the questions you expect to answer by the time you finish listening to this class. Chemical equations. What are chemical equations? My best definition is to define chemical equations as shorthand, where we can represent a chemical reaction. Of course, a chemical reaction is a chemical change. So if we can represent that on paper in a short way, We'll do that as chemical equations. And it, that will give us dividing chemical equations into two parts, into the reactant and the product. Of course, the reactants are those things that are about to get into a chemical reaction. The product are the results of that chemical reaction. A very good example is the formation of water or steam. Here you look at that. To the, to the left is where I have my reactant. And to the right is how my product, those things that are forming from the reactant. Of course, if you look at this equation very well, at the end of each of these molecules or substances reacting, you see a parenthesis, and inside a parenthesis, you see uh, a letters. Now, we usually represent this as the physical state of matter. Now, of course, the gases are represented as G. If they're liquid, they represent the pure liquid. You represent them as L, pure solid, you represent them as S. And if those substances are dissolved in water, you represent them as AQ, which simply means aqueous. AQ simply means aqueous. That means it is dissolved in water. That's exactly what I meant. All right. So in part of those I said earlier, I've already said this, that reactants are substances that undergo, of course, there are substances that undergo the chemical change. Every reaction is a representation of a chemical change. And then the product are those things that are formed as a result of that chemical change. Now, when you have two reactants or product in a chemical reaction, they're usually separated by a plus sign. A plus sign means two things are coming into intimacy of a chemical reaction. And then when you have the, the products are and the, and, and the reactants are separated by a comma. If we go back to that equation, we have the you found that to, to the right is the product. To the left is the reactant, and they're separated by an arrow. That is the function of this arrow here, to separate uh, the product from the reactant. Now, so we move on from there. Now, what about balancing of equation? Balancing of equation simply obeys the law of conservation of, of matter. Or you can call it the law of conservation of mass. What it simply says is that, of course, matter can neither be created nor destroyed in a chemical reaction. What actually happens, like we did in earlier chapter, it is to see that it is changes from one form to another. And the same thing is happening here. Now, the number of, remember, in balancing equations, what we are doing is to balance the number of atoms of each element present. Of course, this element represents the simplest form of substances we talk about. Now, the number of atoms of each element in both the reactant side and the product side must equal. So there's no way they can be different. And that is actually what we're going to be doing. So 
And what do we do? How do we balance that? What we simply do is to add coefficient to the right of each element or substance. To use that idea of the trial and error, of course, we use the trial and error at the strength. The best method to use is the trial and error method to balance equation. To make sure that as we add this coefficient in, in front of each of these elements, that at the end of the day, the number of this element in both sides of the reaction balance. Then let's take an example and do this in this case. In this case now, if you look at this equation, we can first of all, usually a test student, you can start simple by simple by counting the number of atoms on both sides of the equation. Usually I advise students to do this, that it doesn't matter. If I draw a table here, and now the table to the column to the right represents the product, to the left represents the reactant. And if I say, okay, let me count the number of distance that I have here. So my edge here, I have two atoms of hydrogen on this side, and oxygen, I have also two atoms of hydrogen. If I go to the, this is to the left. If I go to the right, I have two atoms of hydrogen to the right, and I have only one atom of oxygen to the right. And then to balance this equation, what I'm simply going to do is to add coefficients in each of these spaces I created to make sure that they're balanced. What am I going to do? Hydrogen is two, hydrogen is balanced. I don't have a problem with hydrogen. But I look at this. Oxygen is two to the left. What, is, what I will think is algebraically, I'm going to add two to this front. And adding two here simply means I'm multiplying this by two. If you multiply one oxygen times two, that gives me two. What that simply means is that I have actually added two here. This is two oxygen. But I've messed up my hydrogen here. What it means is I've also multiplied hydrogen by two. So I'm going to get four here. And to correct that, correct my hydrogen at this point, I have to multiply this one again by two. I'm multiplying two, adding two here, and this gives me four. Now this equation is balanced. If you look at this, there is two times two, four, four hydrogen here. There's four hydrogen here, two oxygen here. And at the end of the day, because there was nothing added here, you'll always add your coefficient as one. You don't have to add it, but most times the test students at this level, you can always add it. It helps you to know your standing. It doesn't take away anything to add, just one. So this is exactly how we use the trial and error method to balance chemical equation. And we're going to do a lot of problems as we move. Now, I have some important useful tips. You need to take note. These useful tips will help you to balance equation very fast and accurately. The first thing is that we balance equation using the trial and error method. That's the only most convenient way. There are other methods that involves using linear equations, algebra, or matrices. Those are much more complex to what we'll be doing in chemistry and at the level of this class. Secondly, you have if you have metals, try to balance the metals first. Secondly, you now balance other non-metals except hydrogen and oxygen. You balance every other guy except these guys and then balance the hydrogen and then oxygen usually comes last. And finally, now in some reaction in some reactions, you find that, that you find the polyatomic ions which of course, remember before now, we had said that polyatomic ions represent single entities. That is the way they exist. We treat them as a single entity and balance them the way they are, provided they do not change on both sides of the equation. At times, they do change on both sides of the equation. In that case, you have to balance the individual elements in that polyatomic compound. And finally, you do not touch the subscript. Touching the subscript changes the identity. If you touch the subscript, you change the identity. It changes the identity of substances. You change the identity of those substances or elements or the way they exist. So you do not touch them for any reasons. Just leave them the way they are. So these are the useful tips. And the next thing we're going to do is to take it into action and begin to do our balancing of equation immediately without wasting time. The first question here gave us both in watts and uh, equation. It says methane combines with oxygen when it bonds to form carbon dioxide and steam. Steam is the gaseous form of water. According to the equation below, it says balance the equation. Again, I tell student, we're going to start by drawing a table. I like using my red. I'm going to go back to it. So I'm going to go back to the red. Let's start. Now, so the, what I'm going to do, I'm going to count the number of atoms on both sides of the equation. So let's count. The number of atoms, the first one I have here is carbon. 
how many carbon do I have? I have one carbon here. And then hydrogen. How many hydrogen do, I, do we have here? Four hydrogens. Then oxygen. How many oxygen do we have here? We have two oxygens. Then we go to the right side. The right side also have two, two substances there. Carbon here. Usually try to maintain the same horizontal line for each type of element. So here carbon also has one here on that side. Then hydrogen. What's our hydrogen? Here hydrogen has only two. So we're going to say H equal to two. And then oxygen here has, look at. Now, if you come in contact with this kind of problem, I tell students, the best thing to do is to treat this as an algebraic equation. Now, some authors or some other people will want you to say, okay, zero, you have two plus one is three. No, I advise students, make this thing looks like an algebra equation. Look at what you do. Here now we have oxygen. There are more than one stuff here. So on this side, there is two. On this side, there is one. So I'll say two plus one. I know it's three. So it is better to do it this way. We're going to see why this helps a lot. We're going to see why this is more, more important and convenient. And then we move and start balancing our equation. What the first thing we do? We balance carbon. Remember, in this case now, we balance carbon. That's the sequence. Like my, if you look at my tips again, I'm going to balance carbon first. After carbon, I'm going to balance my hydrogen and oxygen comes last. So if my carbon, one, one is balanced. Now, when you have one, one in your equation, do not hurry to add the one immediately because something might be messed up along the line. So I'm not going to add it, but it's balanced. We have, we don't have problem with that. I go to hydrogen. Four hydrogens here. I have four hydrogens here. I go this way. I have two hydrogens. How do I balance it all? What I have to do is to multiply this out by two. If I multiply this by two, I'm going to have four hydrogens. What it means is I'm going to add two in front of hydrogen. Two times two is four. But I have messed up my oxygen. You see that? While trying to balance my hydrogen, my oxygen is messed up. What am I going to do? I'm going to fix my mess up immediately. So now what it means is that the oxygen that is on this side has been multiplied by two. So I'm going to say bracket two. So what that simply means is that 2 plus 2, my oxygen is now 4. Remember, my oxygen is 2 here. So what do I do? Since it's 4 here, I'm going to multiply it by 2. I'm multiplying by 2 here. The only place it is here is to add 2 here. And at the end of the day, if you multiply this 2 by 2, it gives me 4. Here gives me 4. Here gives me 4. And my equation is all balanced. Now, I will always advise you that if you, you can always pause this video, then go try this question and come back and check it for comprehension now this one is a typical case of we have a word question a word equation we're not going to write it and then we balance it these are the two things we're going to do we're going to write it it says sulfur trioxide is an air pollutant responsible for acid rain it is produced when sulfur dioxide gas react with oxygen so look at the three things we need to call so this is Remember, the reactant comes in first, so I'm going to put it first. So first of all, it starts from sulfur dioxide. I'm going to put SO2. Of course, I don't know what is. I'm going to put dash here to balance it. SO2 plus. Now, sulfur dioxide is a gas, so I'm going to put gas plus. And then what next? The next thing I'm going to do is to add my oxygen. So it's going to be oxygen. Again, I don't know what is here, so I'm going to put gas. Giving me sulfur trioxide, which is SO3. Again, it is a gas. I'm going to put this. That is a chemical reaction. From the name, remember, we've done nomenclature, and that is the usefulness of this. Although in this case, I, I in trying to, Test you. I'm not testing you for the main lecture. So I'm, all, I'm always going to write the formulas if I'm going to give you in this exam. But assuming that is not done, you came, in, you came in contact with a place where it was not written, you should be able to comfortably do this at this point. Now I draw my table to balance the equation as usual and count my atoms. Towards the right, I have sulfur and I only have one sulfur here. And oxygen here, I have, okay, now again, we come in that. Oxygen here is what? Two plus 2. You see that I told you? 2 plus, you have oxygen 2 plus 2. It's important always to do this. 2 oxygen here, 2 oxygen here. And then we go to the other side. Again, sulfur here is 1. 
And then oxygen here is what? How many? Just three. And then we balance the equation. I'm going to use different color now in this case to help make it different. My sulfur is one is one is balanced. So I go to oxygen. If you look at this, there is four, there are four oxygen here to the left and three oxygen to the right. What am I going to do? You think, okay, how best do you fit in this oxygen to make it balance? How best do you think you fit into oxygen to make it balance? Now, I want to do something. What I'm going to do is, this is 3. If I multiply this by 3, it's going to give me 6. And what it means, if I multiply this 1 by 2, I'm going to have 4 here plus this. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just add 2 at this point. If I add 2 here, I've multiplied my oxygen by 2. This gives me 6. However, I've messed up my what? Sulfur. I'm going to multiply my sulfur by what? By 2. Again, it's going to give me 2 sulfur. Now, because I've messed up my sulfur to the left, I have to fix my sulfur to the... Sorry, to the right. I've messed up my sulfur to the right. I have to fix my sulfur to the left. So what am I going to do? I'm going to go back here and multiply by 2. Right? I'm going to add 2 here. That's going to give me 2. My sulfur is fixed. However, remember my oxygen, I've been issue here, was messed up at 6. If I go back here now, this sulfur, in fixing this sulfur, my oxygen here becomes 2 times to 4. That means I have to multiply this by 2, 2 times 2, 4. And if I add it to, that gives me 6. If you look at it now, so there is 6 oxygen, 6 oxygen, 2 sulfur. Since I didn't add anything here, I can drop 1 at this point. Now the equation is balanced. This is the balanced equation for this reaction. The next problem it says balance the equation. This is gallium sulfide reacts with hydrogen. Again, remember the tips. There's a metal here, so I'm going to ba balance my metal first before the hydrogen. That's the thing. So I'm going to balance the metal first. That's the first thing I do. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to draw my tables again. Remember, draw my table again. So I'm going to write out, count my atoms. If I'm counting my atoms, do that with red. So gallium here is 2. Sulfur here is 3. Hydrogen here is 2. I go this way again. Gallium here is 1. And then sulfur here is 1. And hydrogen here is 2. Now I'm going to balance my gallium first. Gallium is 2 here. Of course, I'm going to use green to do that. Gallium is 2 here. Gallium is 1 here. So what do I do? I'm going to this by 2. Add 2 here. My gallium is 2. Gallium is balanced. I don't have a problem with gallium anymore. Now, my sulfur is 3. I have 3 sulfur. So, it's 3 at this point. To the right is not. So what am I doing? I'm going to multiply this sulfur times 3 to give me 3. What it means? I'm going to add 3 here. If I add 3 here, my sulfur is balanced. However, in balancing my sulfur, I've messed up my hydrogen. So 3 times 2 means my hydrogen has multiplied by this to give me 6. How do I fix it? I go back this way. Hydrogen only occurs on one side, so it's easy. I'm going to fix this by adding, multiplying this by 3, and that gives me 6. If you look at it, gallium is 2, gallium is 2. Sulfur is 3, sulfur is 3. Hydrogen is 6, hydrogen is 6. My equation is balanced. I'm not going to drop 1 to this point. I have a balanced equation. Yes, you can all pause this video at this point, try to try a few problems, and then always come back. Now, the next two problems, we will use the fraction method in balancing this problem. In problem 4 and 5, we'll be using, just, we're going to be using a fraction to balance it. We're going to be using fraction. It is not necessarily a fraction. Because at the end of the day, we need to remove the fraction by multiplying all through. But it makes it faster. It just helps you make it faster. And most of this kind of equation is looks like combustion of organic compound. That's why we usually see this kind of equation. Combustion of organic compound. So usually in this kind of equation, carbon will be burnt. Then it gives you, you know, carbon will be burnt. It will always give you carbon dioxide and water. So let's see how this problem is done. Now, you can also use table to balance this comfortably, although it might take you a little bit longer. But I want to sh show you the easiest and shortcut to do this kind of problem when we encounter a hydrocarbon um, where 
it's combustion. This is a combustion reaction to give you carbon, carbon dioxide and oxygen. So the form of this reaction actually is something like this. CXHY plus O2 gives you CO2 plus H2O. This is actually what this kind of reaction gives you, no matter what. Now, <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do, like as usual, I'm going to balance my carbon. I have four carbon here. So to balance my carbon, I'm going to add four. Now, okay, I'm going to start with my red and finish it with my... I'm going to start with my red and finish it with green. So this four, I'm going to add four here. Because I have to clean out something as I do this. This is four. So my carbon is four, now my carbon is four. Now, remember the rule. You balance everything before hydrogen and oxygen. So now I balance my carbon. So I'm going to balance hydrogen before oxygen. So I want to balance my hydrogen. There's 10 hydrogen here. Now, if you look at this side, there is two. And I can make it balance by adding what? Five. If I add five here, I'm still balancing it. It's fine. Okay. This is now five times two, ten. So what it means is that my carbon is balanced. Four, four carbon. Hydrogen, ten. Ten carbon on both sides. Now it remains my oxygen. Let me count the total number of oxygen. Here I have two oxygen. This side I have four times two, eight. Eight plus five oxygen gives me 13 oxygen. Now, if you put 13 here, it's going to be too high. And you're going to start making something up again. Because there is two as a subscript here. Do you know what to do in this kind of problem? If it is an even number, if I had had 12 over 2, it would balance this equation. But it's not even. So what are you going to do? I'm going to say 13 divided by 2. If you say 13 divided by 2, it's going to balance this equation. But equations do not accept fractions. It has to be a whole number. What do I do? I will multiply everything by. So we're going to multiply across. Across by 2 to make everything whole number. So let's do that. So now I'm going to go to my red. So I'm going to go to my red. So if I'm going to multiply everything by 2 to remove these two, so what would that be? So if I multiply this by 2, this is going to give me 2. If you multiply this thing by 2, it's going to cancel out. Remember, okay, let's see. If you have 13 divided by 2 times 2 over 1, it will cancel itself. So what am I going to have here? What I'm going to have here will not be 13. So I'm going to cancel what I have here. Okay, let me take a small eraser and take it off. No, it's the lighter one. So now I'm going to have 13 here. Go back to my pen. So I'm going to have 13. And now multiply this by 2. What does it give you? Multiply this by 2 gives you 8. And then multiply this by 2 gives you 10. And now when you check it, everything, let's check it now. There is 2 times 4, 8 carbons, 8, eight carbons here, yeah, 8 times 1, because carbon is just on one side. 2 times 10, 20 hydrogen, hydrogen 10 times 2, 20 hydrogen. Oxygen is 13 times 2, 26 oxygens. Let's see, 8 times 2 here is 16. 16 oxygen plus 10 oxygen here, 26, and the equation is balanced. So you can pause this video now, and then... Try the next problem when you look at it, then after that you can come back because the next problem will be the same way. Now, this equation actually is a photosynthetic reaction. This equation represents photosynthesis. This is an equation for photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, remember, is when carbon dioxide combines with oxygen to make glucose and water. And then from here, the glucose can now be stored into starch and other forms of carbohydrate storage of course now so it is almost something we did last time but the difference is that now the equation was like kind of a ton but a little bit different because now this is not a hydrocarbon now this also contains an oxygen so this is carbohydrate now this is going to still work just like the last one let's try it and see what happens here again let's start on both sides you see here, carbon is 6, carbon is 1 here. To make it equal, I'm going to put 6 carbon here. If I put 6 carbon here, 
Now, my carbon is balanced. I go to hydrogen. Hydrogen is 12 here. It doesn't occur in any other place. 12. How many do I have here? It's 2. So what am I going to do? I'm going to add 6 here. 6 times 2 is 12. This is 12. Now, it's balanced. Now, I go to my oxygen. Remember, oxygen is the last. Let's count. There is 6 oxygen here. 6. Okay, let's start from here. 6 times 2 is 12. 12 plus 6. 18 oxygen. So, there is 18 oxygen here. If we go to this side, we have two oxygen only on this side and six on this side. The one that usually gives a problem is the one staying alone. So we can easily balance this. What am I going to do? Because I know I have six here. I'm going to minus this six. If I do 18 minus six, okay, not to make this thing confusing. Let me just, just do 18 minus six. So if I do 18 minus six, I'm going to be left with 12 oxygen at all. So, what I mean is I don't have to do anything from here. I'm going to now balance the remaining from here. So, what, there is 2 again. So, what do I do again? I'm going to say 12 divided by 2. Unfortunately enough, 12 divided by 2 is not an odd number. 12 is an even number. So, 12 divided will be 6. So, I'm going to go back. I'm going to take this away. And then, I'm going to add 6 to this. So, now the equation is balanced. Since I didn't add anywhere here, I'm going to put 1 here. This is how you balance the reaction of photosynthesis. thesis. We go to the next problem. Now, this is another level of problem. In this type of problem, it involves, you look at it, this is a typical precipitation reaction. A precipitation reaction involves the formation of solid as part, as part of the product. So you see there's a solid here, this is a precipitate. Now, but that is not just what happened here. Now, you see, there are polyatomic ions here represented. So, what are we going to do? We're going to treat them as single entities. So, again, uh, like I always did, we're going to use table to balance. So, I'm going to draw my table here. I'm going to draw a line. Now, we count. Here, aluminum. I have two aluminums here. Now, there is sulfur here. This sulfur, I'm treating it as one entity. This is sulfate ion. So I'm going to say sulfur. How many of them do I have here? So this parenthesis means I have three. So I have SO4 2 minus is equal to 3. Remember, sulfate is SO4 2 minus. We did this earlier in nomenclature. We have three of it here. Now, what else do I have? Barium here. Look at barium. So I have barium. So this is BA. is only one. And I have nitrate. Look at this. Nitrate is two because of this parenthesis. So I have NO3 minus equal to 2. So I've been able to account for all I have at this point. And I'll go to the right. Again here, aluminum is turning out to be only 1 here. And then <clears throat> my sulfate again, is for 2 minus. There's no bracket here, so this guy is only 1. And then what else? Barium. Again, barium is just 1 here. And then, what else do I have here? Nitrate. If you look at this nitrate, nitrate is equal to how many? Three. I have three nitrate in that reaction. So, <clears throat> oh, it asks us to write this in words. Too. Okay, I'm going to find a space to write that. I've already taken a lot of my space. So, what do we do? The next thing, we begin to balance. Now, balance the metals first. Remember. So, we have metals here. So, I want to balance my aluminum first. And see what happens. I have two aluminum here. I have one here. So what do I do? I'm going to multiply this by 2 to make it 2 aluminum. What it means, I'm going to add 2 here. So my aluminum is balanced. Now listen, when you are balancing an equation, if you mess up an entity, a, a polyatomic ion, an element, or whatever, treat it first before you come back to continue with the sequence you have. Remember what I told you, we're going to balance the metals first and then come back. That is okay. But in trying to balance this metal, I've messed up my nitrate so i'm going to go fix my nitrate if you look at this now nitrate is three here if you, if you add it to this two times three six i'm going to go to my nitrate immediately and multiply it by two and this gives me six on this side but i have to fix it on this side to fix my nitrate on this side what do i do remember this is two here it is, nitrate is two here to fix this i have to multiply it by what three to make it six what it means is i have to add three here. if i add three here my nitrate is okay but i've messed up my barrier Look at my bedroom now. My bedroom becomes what? Th three. 
What it means, I have to go back and fix my bedroom. If I go back to fix this bedroom, what will my bedroom be? Bedroom is one here, so I'm going to times it by three again. To make so what it means, I'm going to put three here. If I put three here, my bedroom is now three. And again, I've messed up my surface. Here, my surface is, see, my surface is three here. Oh, and I go back there. My surface is three. I don't have to do anything about that. That makes it cool. So I was thinking I messed up my software, but you see, if you balance this equation, if the equation is correctly written and you're balancing it, you find that as you try to mess up what you, as you try to correct what you messed up, you're going, it will lead you to a properly balanced equation. So let us count. Two aluminum, two aluminum. Surface is three, surface is three. So remember, I didn't finish up. Now my surface is three. I have to always show it on this side. Times three is equal to three. So my surface is three, my surface is three. My bedroom here now is three. My bedroom is three, which is the one we have here. And now my net rate is three times two, six. Here, three times two, six. The equation is balanced. This is how you balance this equation. Now, let's write the in word. I hope I have good space. So it will be aqueous, let's see, aqueous aluminum. Sulfate reacts with aqueous barium nitrate. to form solid barium sulfate to form barium sulfate and aluminum this aluminum nitrate the knowledge of nomenclature will help you to figure out these names remember we did this uh, in the previous uh, I would say in the previous two modules, we, we addressed nomenclature of organic compound. All right, this is what it is at this point. So we'll get to the next problem. Balance the equation below again. This equation again. So you can pause this video at this point in time, try this problem, and then come back and see if you got it correctly. So let's balance the equation again. I'm going to draw my table. This time I'm going to draw it now and give myself some space down here. Not to take all my space. Here I have lead. Let's count all the atoms. We have lead, lead is only one to this side, and then I have nitrate followed, NO3 minus is just two, and I have sodium, sodium is two, and what else do I have there? Sulfate, sulfate is one. Then again, I go to this side, I have my lead, lead gives me one, nitrate, gives you one at this point then sodium is one and sulfate is one so let's start balancing my lead balance metals first metal lead is balanced so let me go to my sodium my sodium is two here is one is so i'm going to times it by two at two here is two it's Sodium is balanced there, but I've messed up my nitrate. My nitrate is now 2, right? So what do I do? So my nitrate is now 2. So I'm going to go fix my nitrate. If you go here, the nitrate is already fixed. It's 2, so I don't need to touch it. And then, so I have my lead fixed. I have my nitrate fixed. I have my sodium fixed. What about my sulfate? My sulfate is 1. Sulfate is 1. No need to fix it. The equation is balanced. So if you want to just help out, you can just add 1-1 one, one on all sides. And then your equation is balanced the next one still on polyatomic students struggle with this that is why i included a lot of, a lot of problems on this polyatomic ion side of equation because students struggle with these polyatomic ions so greatly again we'll do this one again we'll start ion here ion has two after ion sulfate is three
and then after sulfate what is that? we have potassium potassium is one it's one potassium here and then OH OH is one now in doing this you don't necessarily need to write this is a scratch work whatever you're doing here is scratch work you don't need necessarily to write the identities of the ions or elements or the correct way you need to it's just a scratch work what is going to help you to count your atoms properly and balance it i go to the right ion here ion is just one that's what we have go to sulfate sulfate is one that's what i have here and i go to potassium potassium gives me two here and then i go to oh oh yeah oh gives me equal to three that's what i have here so let's start ion is two here I want to balance my ion first. It's a metal. Add two here. It gives me two. Now, if you look at this, I've messed up my what? My OH. My OH is now six. So what it means, I've made it six. So I have to fix it first. If I go here, it is one. I have to multiply this by six to make it six. So I'm going to add six here. Six OH. My OH is balanced. But in doing that, I messed up my potassium. What do I do? I have to go and check my potassium here. My potassium here has been messed up. So I multiplied it by six to be six. If I go this way, my potassium here is what? My potassium is 2. To make it 6, I have to multiply by 3 to make it 6. So I have to add 3 here. So if you look at this now, let's see. Iron is balanced. My sulfate is not yet balanced because even here I messed up my sulfate to be what? 3. So I multiply by 3 here to be 3. So I'm going to go back here and look at it. Oh, oh, it's balanced because it's already 3 here. And then everything is okay. So you see that? So I have ion is 2, ion is 2. Sulfate is 3, sulfate is 3. Potassium is 6, potassium is 6. Hyd um, OH, hydroxyl ion OH is 6 here, it is 6 here. The equation is balanced. So you can always add your 1 here to show that your equation is balanced. All right, the next problem. Now, this is another problem in this one. We're going to be writing this from word to equation. It says, when a powder mixture of aluminum metal and iron three oxide is heated, it reacts to form liquid iron metal and solid aluminum oxide. Write the balanced equation for the reaction. So the first thing I need to do is when a powder mixture of aluminum metal. So powder means it's a solid. So I'm going to have aluminum as solid react ion 3 oxide remember how to write this remember ion 3 means it is fe3 plus oxide is always two minus if they swap their sign it's going to give me remember that it's going to be fe2 and then oxygen will take the three so this is going to be oh, i'm going to give space for balance fe2 o3 this is the formula so they're heated. This is really the sign for heat. The triangle sign is written below or above the area. It doesn't matter. And then to form liquid ion. If that means this is a displacement reaction. Tell me what it means. Aluminium will come and kick out iron. So it forms iron on its own. So it becomes liquid plus and solid aluminum oxide. Again, aluminum is three plus. So if you if you exchange the charges again, aluminum is this oxygen two minus. It's gonna still give you Al two O three. So this is gonna give me Al two O three solid. This is what the equation will look like. Of course, I'm gonna put this because I'm gonna balance the equation again. Let's count the atoms we have on, on all sides of the equation. If I count the atoms, aluminum here is equal to 1, ion here is equal to 2, and oxygen here is equal to 3. Here, aluminum here is equal to 2, ion is equal to 1, and oxygen is equal to 3. So, in balancing this equation, we can start from anywhere. It doesn't matter. Here, first of all, aluminum is 2. Here is one here. So I'm going to just multiply this by two. Put two. It's on its own. It's easy to balance. 
that is balanced. I go to iron and oxygen. Iron is two here. Iron is two here. You see that? So one is on his own, so it's easy to balance two. I'm going to multiply this by two. If we put two here, that gives you two. And then oxygen is three here. Oxygen is three here. The equation is balanced. So you can now add one here and one here, and the equation is balanced. Now, of course, the last but not least of the problems we're going to be solving today in balancing of this equation is a balanced equation below. Here it says this is good, solid, it's reacting with oxygen to form good 3 oxide. Again, we're going to draw our line as usual. We have a good AU, here is 1, here oxygen is giving us 2. Then here we go. Again, gold is giving us two. And oxygen here is giving us what? Three. Balance the metals first. Remember, oxygen always the last. So I'm going to balance my gold. There is two gold here. I'm going to multiply this by two. That means add two here. My gold is now two. Balanced. That's what it means. But my oxygen is two and three here. I want you to see what is going to happen now. So you find out this is an odd number. It will be difficult to balance this. And the best way I can think of balancing this is to do what? To balance this, you have to make this an even number. And don't, if I add 2 here now, 2 times 3 becomes 6. 3 times 2 is 6. My oxygen becomes 6 here. However, what happens to my gold? My gold did messed up now to become 4. What do I do? I'm going to take an error. Remember, this is trial and error. If I take this off, I'm going to make it what? Make it to be 4 on this side. What it means is now, what I did initially here is not going to work. Because I'm going to now multiply it by what? Is 1 is. I'm going to multiply it by 4. For it to be what? 4. So this is going to be 4. So I'm going to add 4 here. So my gold is now 4. So my gold is 4 here. My gold is 4 here. Remember, my oxygen is 6 here. To correct my oxygen is here, what it means is that I need to multiply this. If you multiply 2 by 3, it's going to give you 6. So I'm going to add 3 here. And now my equation is balanced correctly by counting those atoms. So it has been an interesting ride in this lecture. Thank you once again for listening. If you do have any questions, do not forget the usual channels to get to me. If you have time, always stick into my office hours and talk to me. And once again, enjoy the rest of your day. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for listening. Bye.